There is so much going on with our politicians and bureaucrats and national broadcaster right here in Australia that sometimes we forget to look at and keep an eye on what our elected officials are doing overseas in our name. Now, we all know that one of our most important relationships is with the United Kingdom. But we also know that for many, particularly those in the Labour Party, the reality of Australia's British heritage and ongoing partnerships with the UK is a matter that, frankly, many on the left find kind of contentious. Enter Penny Wong. Now, I've made no secret of the fact that I think the foreign minister has done a pretty good job better, in fact, than I expected, managing her portfolio and protecting Australia's interests over the past six or seven months. But today, though, Wong saw fit to give the Brits a lecture about their colonial past, an odd move, you would think, given our close ties and the fact that they will only need to become closer. Wong paid tribute to her family and their links to Britain. She said that, quote, in 1836, just two years after Westminster passed the South Australian Colonization Act, my mother's great-great-grandparents were some of the first British to settle in South Australia. Oh, lovely. Wong added that that ancestral connection with, the Brit with Britain has been standard among the men and women who have served in my role. Well, Penny Wong, it's also common to the at least 33% of Australians who do all sorts, sorts of roles, from plumber to principal to foreign minister, and themselves have, yes, an ancestral connection to Britain. And then she said this. But the other side of my family had a very different experience of British colonisation. My father is descended from Hakka and Cantonese Chinese. Many from these clans laboured in the British North Borneo Company in tin mines and plantations for tobacco and timber. Many worked as domestic servants for British colonists, as did my own grandmother. Sometimes such stories can feel uncomfortable for those whose stories they are and for those who hear them. But understanding the past enables us to better share the present and the future. Well, OK, but I got to say it's a little bit hard to see what is necessarily uncomfortable about that family history. I mean, her ancestors worked as domestics and miners, and here she is, foreign minister of a former British colony. It's hard to see what is necessarily uncomfortable, per se, about that, unless, of course, the idea here is to join a side in the ongoing culture war going on within Britain about its colonial past, something that is pushed unashamedly by the left in that country as it attempts to dismantle its institutions in exactly the same way the left in this country tries to undermine our British foundations, the British foundations of modern Australia to further their own goals of remaking our society. And we have to ask ourselves, how would we feel here in Australia if Joe Biden or Emmanuel Macron came here and got up and gave a speech telling us all to say, vote for the voice to parliament or something like that? Now, I have to say, I think this was a diplomatic faux pas to go over to Britain and give them a bit of a lecture about dealing with their colonial past. As Jacqueline Magney wrote in The Australian Today, Quote, that such a broadside comes as Australia is looking for even more defense contribution from the United Kingdom and its other key ally in the AUKUS pact, the U.S., in delivering the next generation nuclear propelled submarines and in providing stability to the Pacific region. Indeed. Yet this is not the only time we have seen how Australia's progressive political class has not been able to fully come to terms with the fact of our British historical ties and ongoing strategic and trade alliances. Just last December, right before Christmas, there was that bizarre story, you may have seen it, that our embassy in London had removed portraits of our former old high commissioners, reportedly because they didn't want a bunch of paintings of old white guys cluttering up the walls. And my own sources have told me that since coming to power, Labour and DFAT have been at sixes and sevens trying to figure out how Britain fits into their constellation of relationships with the world given their desire to pivot to the Pacific and their general discomfort with anything too Anglo. It's something, it's something that has been, of course, going on since the fall of Singapore, this pulling apart of Australia and the UK. But since events since then, events such as the dismissal and the UK's joining the common market, 
have caused many in DFAT to think the relationship is indeed unimportant and even antique. One individual familiar with the way things work in labor in DFAT said that both organizations at heart associate the British with plummy old toffs and the Menzies era and, and the whole I did but see her passing by thing and all of that. The fact that so many news stories referred to the ongoing debate over colonization in Britain also suggests that maybe, just maybe, DFAT mandarins were in reporters' ears, backgrounding about this. And indeed, Richard Marles, defense Sec uh, minister, was right up there to back her up, telling ABC Breakfast, quote, it's really important for all countries to think about their past in terms of providing a gateway for meaningful engagement in the future. And we want to see a Great Britain which is engaged in our region, and they certainly seek to be that, because if Britain engaged with the Indo-Pacific, it will help provide stability in the Indo-Pacific, and that's really important, he said. Well, great, true, but later Wong was forced to kind of clarify, walk back her remarks at a press conference when she said that, asked about her comments about colonization, quote, I was making a point about histories and talking about who we are. If we are able to speak about that, multifaceted history, that does give us greater capacity to engage with the countries of the region. And she added that I think the narrative and story of who Australia really is, is an enormously powerful part of our foreign policy, and I intend to deploy it. Well, indeed, but frankly, we have already seen how the left in this country has tried to rewrite our own history as being little more than a disaster from 1788 through to Guff Whitlam. And I'm not sure our friends in Britain would appreciate them doing the same thing over there.